so if you thought about this, what makes a good poem? I, I guess you could say that poetry is subjective. Yeah, but of our guests, next guest's work, one critic said he manages a balance between thinking and feeling that allows his poems to be genuine and honest. Another critic says he's a writer for the new millennium. His gritty, authentic voice is full of the anxiety a possibility. We're talking about Jerry LaFemina, who is a poet in residence this year for Salisbury Poetry Week. Welcome to the show. It's a pleasure to be here. Okay, that's pretty high acclaim. Um, uh, I, I can't speak about the people, how much I pay for <laughs> such reviews. Um, but uh, no, it's, it's a humbling thing, really. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I'm just fortunate enough to do something I love and people seem to respond to it. So. Yeah. So you obviously love it. What got you to where you are today? Um, I always wanted to be a writer. I mean, as far back as uh, kindergarten, my, my mother was one of those first generation of single mothers in the, in the 60s, and, and um, there were no real daycare. So I, I started going to uh, a sort of preschool in the Brooklyn Public Library. Um, so I was surrounded by books at an early age. Um, my mother uh, never went to college. Uh, my father didn't graduate high school. So the idea that I would become a writer seemed ridiculous in some ways. But um, I fell in love with words and the possibility of language. And I think that's, that's really the key skill. You just have to love the sort of plasticity of language and what you can do with it. Tell us about uh, how that love of language is in today's, with today's generation. I mean, is poetry alive and well? Poetry is alive and well. Um, I mean, you have poets on Instagram, poets tweeting, uh, poets on YouTube. Um, in some ways, this is the golden age of poetry in, in this country. Um, it's, it's really amazing. You have more presses producing more books of poetry than at other, any other time in this country. Hmm. So, so poetry can be powerful. Why do you think that is? Um, I'd like to say that there's a moment in, a, in the best poems, and I think this is true in, in the best songs, uh, in the best novels, in, in the best artwork in general, where you have that ecstatic moment where you step out of yourself and you become part of something more. Um, and that's both incredibly subjective and incredibly objective. But I think that, you know, Whitman says, what I assume you too shall assume uh, in Leaves of Grass. And the goal is to enter this space on the page that is, is the, the moment of c communion, that moment where you and I become one in this experience of language that we share. Hmm. Wow. Yeah. All right. So let's discuss the role you're playing this week as poet in residence. What does that mean? Oh, um, I'm doing a lot. <laughs> <laughs> you're busy. I mean, I mean, I, I just love the whole idea of, of the, the Salisbury Poetry Week. I mean, what a great thing to have, you know, the Purdue Foundation, the Wacomico Arts Council, the Lower Eastern Shore Chapter, the Maryland Writers Association, Valmouth Poetry, um, the schools, the university, all coming together to sort of say, we want to celebrate National Poetry Month in this way and, and get people to come together. And so we've had this great experience last night of having uh, spoken word performers, uh, stage poets, and page poets come together and read. We have workshops going on that I'm going to lead. There are readings. But again, it's that place of community. Right. Um, you know, poetry is that shared language. And what I love about this is this, it's this whole community coming together and saying, we're sharing in this language and the possibilities of language. We, we take the English language often for granted. Right. We use it unspecifically. We use the word love for, you know, Oh, I love a good I love a good bagel, and I love my girlfriend. Well, there's yeah. different things. Well, you here's know? what we're going to do. Yeah, we're we're going to give you the opportunity to share this language with us 
specifically. I'm looking forward we, to it. We want to hear you recite something for us. So we're going to let you go over to the uh, Mid-South Audio stage while we go over a few of the events that are coming up, okay? Sounds good. After you, sir, we'll Thank go you. right ahead over here. Uh, now, there's going to be a poetry reading from 7 to 9 tonight at Salisbury University Commons in the Worcester Room. Going to be readings by various poets, including Jerry. And there will be a poetry workshop from 3 to 5 tomorrow. That takes place at Salisbury University's University House. Now, you must pre-register for this event by calling calling this number 410-546-5397. And on Saturday, there will be a writing workshop for teens and adults at the Wicomico County Public Library. There are workshops all day, Saturday, at different times and for different groups. There's more information you need to know about that, so call this number 410-546-5397 for that information. And finally, Sunday, there's going to be an Eastern Shore Teen Voices event at James M. Bennett High in Salisbury from 1 until 3 in the afternoon. It is a spoken word poetry event. Now, we know we just tossed a whole bunch of information in your lap, so we're going to have all of this information on our website, delmarvalife.com. Just click on what's happening. And now we turn it over to poet Jerry Lefemina on the Mid-South Audio stage. Arcadia. It's become so ordinary that no one talks anymore about satellites charioting across twilight. Contrails diffused and vibrant before exploding like confidence, like a vase thrown from a table. Imagine in Ohio, some young woman seeking the luminous streak and wishing as if a child again. My parents once believed in this thing called America in the decades after the last war when so many anticipated the states would win the space race, would have a great society, would triumph over cancer. Today, no one drops pennies in a well and the pencil mark of light scrawled across the sky has phone networks and social media hectic with UFO stories, all aliens and convergence. What are we willing to place our bets on? In the bingo hall, a great aunt reorders her lucky charms each hour on Thursday nights. They say the Pledge of Allegiance before the first numbers are drawn. Thus, we choose to believe again. Someone had conceived we could get a Sputnik in orbit, could reach a rocket to the moon, and made us all believe in tomorrow a whole childhood of late night flying saucers and robots, of Martians and ray guns. The future, heads dystopian alien regime, tails Arcadia. Instead, we were given the space shuttle, the Reagan 80s, Mars rovers. So much heartache, so much not despair, but distraction. There's an algorithm tracing my Google searches, another designed to predict whether my next love affair is going to fracture into a thousand shards. Another has plotted that satellite's trajectory, determined how to crash it into the Pacific, safely in a burst of water and steam, though experts admit that along the flight path may fall a hailstorm of debris, flares of detritus, hot with re-entry. 